I'm here with the HDP Invertig 251 AC-DC and in this video I'm going to go over the basic TIG welding settings. This will include DC, DC with pulse, as well as AC settings that you could use on the machine. And this is going to be everything that you need to know to complete a lot of projects. Now this is part of a series. In the previous video I showed how to set up the machine and complete all the different connections. And in the following videos for advanced users I'll go over how to use all of the advanced features that this machine offers. Let's go ahead and look at the control panel on the machine and some of the settings that it has. So we're just using basic settings. So press the gear icon and scroll down to user interface and press the encoder knob to change it from advanced to basic and then press again to select. Now from the home screen, we can go ahead and select our mode. There's just stick and TIG 2T with a pedal or slider here in this mode. We're gonna stay in TIG mode. We'll talk about stick welding in a later video. Now the process selection brings you in to select your polarity. We'll just go with DC, standard with no pulls, HF for high frequency start. This is going to be the setup for most uh, TIG welding, bench TIG welding. And you can set your amperage here on the screen and you can weld like this, but there are a few more settings if you press the main settings button. You can set your pre-flow and then press the encoder to move on to the next, a down slope. If you want it to taper off gradually, and press it one more time, you can get to a post flow. Now, if you aren't familiar with this graphic, in the top left, it shows what parameter you're setting, so you can read that there as well. Now, there is also this menu where you can change a hot start. We'll talk about that in a later video. Generally, it's best to leave it on auto, but you can change a tungsten size if you are using a different size tungsten than 3 seconds of an inch or 2.4 millimeter. But that's a really common size, so most likely you can just leave that alone, and it's set up and ready to run DC TIG welds just like that. The next set of settings we'll look at is for pulsed welding, so we'll stay in DC TIG, but this time we can select pulse right here, and that will give us some more parameters. Once again, just high frequency start. If you haven't used pulsed TIG before, it can be used in two different ways. One, you can use it with a higher frequency, like 30 pulses per second or higher. I usually use around 120. And this just narrows your arc cone and it'll reduce your heat input. You can also use it down around one pulse per second or a low frequency pulse. And this can help pace progression where you add filler metal and you can use it like that. I'll just demonstrate each way to use it. Now, if you enter the main settings menu again, you can notice there's another button called pulse, and this brings you into the pulse settings. So the pulse frequency is how often it switches between a high and a low current every second. So we'll set it to 120 right now. The peak time is how long it is at that peak amperage, and the background amperage is where it sits when it's not at the peak. So we can select those, and that'll be a pretty good set of settings to be able to weld with. Typically, you need to turn up your amperage as well when you're running pulls. You can see this just narrows the arc cone, but the welding technique is basically the same as straight DC. This can be really helpful, especially if you're welding near an edge or on a corner, and you need to control that heat really well. Now you can also use it with a low frequency pulse, and so if we go back here in our pulse settings, I'll just turn this pulses per second clear down to one hertz or one pulse per second. And so this will just be a more visual on and off and help pace progression. So this is another way that you can use it. Right here you can see every time it lights up, the puddle expands a little bit and I can add a dab of filler. Now this machine can actually run both a high and low frequency pulse at the same time with its double pulse feature, but I'm gonna save that for a later video where we go over some of the more advanced features. Right now let's go ahead and move on to some AC welding that you might use for aluminum. So you can change over to AC just by clicking on the process selection and selecting AC and standard is the only option here. You have three different waveforms to choose from in the basic settings mode. There's square wave, which will be the most common and has the highest heat input. Soft, which is a softer square wave and that will be a little quieter with a little less heat. And triangle wave has a greatly reduced heat input for really thin material. We'll just go with square wave and once again, high frequency start here. Now you have three different settings on the home screen. You have a frequency imbalance in addition to your amperage. 
And to move between those, just press on the encoder wheel and that will switch over to be able to adjust your frequency or how often it switches between the positive and negative side of the cycle and your balance, which is the percentage of time that it's on electrode negative. With balance, a lower number is going to provide more etching or cleaning to your weld. Now in the main settings button, there's the same graphic that we saw before with pre-flow, slope down, and post-flow, but you also have an AC wave button now. And here you can also adjust your frequency and AC balance, and you get a graphical representation of what that does to the waveform. So we'll head back to the home screen and it is set up and ready to TIG weld aluminum. In a later video, we'll move into the advanced user interface and talk about a lot of advanced features that this has to tailor your AC arc, but this should be sufficient for a lot of work. Let's look at the jobs menu. So here you can save your settings for a job. So when you enter the jobs menu and press save, it saves all of the settings that you had on the machine so you can return to that whenever you want. Now let's change it over to DC. We'll change our settings all around to a completely different setup, maybe 100 amps here. And then we can go into the jobs menu and you'll see it turned red because it's been modified. But rather than saving it there, I'll save that one to job two. And so if we go back, it's still on the same settings, but we can go and return to job one by pressing recall. And it's exactly how we had it for that first AC job that we created. And it's just that simple. If you're new to TIG welding or you don't TIG weld that often, what we've covered in this video is already enough to complete most projects and it goes far beyond the capability that a lot of machines have. If you are an advanced user, in the following videos in this series, I'll go over how to use the more advanced features like double pulse and advanced waveform controls on AC. So we'll see you in those videos.